Hey everyone, it's Greg Tastic here. And the other day, I was looking through uh, an old external hard drive, and I found some pictures from the first computer that I ever built. So this was back in 2006, August 2006, which means I'm 28 right now today. That was 11 years ago. I was like six, 17 years old. So basically that year I got my first uh, job and it was a part-time job at a pizza place. And I started saving up money because I wanted to build my own computer. We had other computers uh, in our family before, and we had computers then, you know, which were fine for uh, doing stuff like schoolwork and, and instant messaging people and looking up stuff on the Internet. But I was sitting there, and I was like, all right, I'm, I want a computer that I could play games on, that I could have in my room and, you know, keep AOL Instant Messenger running 24 7 in case anyone wanted to talk to me like i didn't want other people to be on it you know looking at my stuff so i wanted a computer all to myself so when i got this first job what i did is i saved up about six or seven hundred dollars to build my own computer and basically most of the money i made that first year that's what that went to it was nice uh back then when i didn't have bills and and things to pay for i could just you know I put some money aside for school and I put some money aside to do things that, you know, like go out and stuff like that, have money to spend. But I basically saved up for this computer. I don't even know. I think I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think I might have actually sent a money order or check to Newegg to buy these parts. I don't know if I actually have, I believe I did that because I think I didn't have a I didn't have a credit card, and my dad said I couldn't use his credit card. So I believe back then they actually did accept that, and it took me longer to get the parts because they had to wait for the check to get there first before they could mail them out. But uh, I'm gonna put up some some pictures of the computer while I'm talking. But I'm gonna start talking about what I actually built with my six hundred dollars and how pathetic it looks nowadays and how dumb I was with uh, what I was buying because I really knew nothing about mixing matching mixing and matching parts or like the importance of what was important so uh, let's start off with my biggest blunder uh, well actually let me let me say something uh, I did make some mistakes with this computer but this computer 11 years later that's what it's been right yeah about 11 years is in a room in in my house right now and my mom and my sister use it when they need a desktop they don't use it very often but it's actually still running and if any you know anyone needs a desktop because i don't want to get into the whole situation but if anyone needs an emergency desktop to use that computer is still running and nothing has failed in it despite the fact that as i was going to say it has a cheap 50 dollar uh, Rosewell case with a power supply included so I just went I was like on a budget I said all right the case comes with a power supply there we go but besides for that it has a uh, AMD Athlon 6400 processor 3500 plus which is a single core processor running at 2.2 gigahertz uh, it has one gig of RAM I don't think I ever upgraded that. I think it still has the one gig of RAM. It has two 512 megabyte uh, uh, DIMMs or whatever you want to call them. And actually, the processor was $106. I know I've been getting better at looking at the camera, but I need to I have my notes over here on the other screen. So I'm going to look at them when I need to because I can't remember everything as much as I tried. The processor was $106. The RAM was $97, so talk about our DDR4 problems now. It's funny because every other computer I built, I used DDR2, well, and on. I built another computer with DDR2, I built one with DDR3, and then I built uh, this one. I luckily got the DDR4 before the memory uh, spiked up in price, so actually this was the most expensive. ninety. Seven dollars is the most amount of money I ever spent on RAM, and all it got me was one gig. 
Because I think my other kits were like around six. I bought whatever was around sixty dollars, which was like two gigs of DDR2, four gigs of DDR3, eight gigs of DDR4. Actually, eight gigs of DDR4 when I bought it was like forty-five bucks. Sixteen gigs was like sixty-five. But anyway, that's how much that cost. It has a, uh, a AM2 motherboard that I got for seventy-five dollars. The brand is called Epochs. I I don't think they exist anymore. And I, I don't know how that motherboard is still running. I didn't. I knew nothing about motherboards back then, and I really had no brand recognition at all. Uh, the graphics card is a, a Gigabyte Radeon X1600 Pro, which sent me back $97 back in the day. And I hated that graphics card because the heatsink, there was like a heatsink on the bottom or something. First of all, it took two uh, slots which I wasn't really expecting, like, I didn't plan for any of this. I thought, oh, graphics card, take one slot. But it took two slots, and the heatsink was terrible. Like, it wasn't stationary. It would move if you if you touched it, or, like, it just wasn't, like, secure on the video card. Like, it was a heatsink that moved that was, like, very disturbing to me. It did have a floppy drive. <laughs> it had a floppy drive in it. For my floppy drive needs in 2006 which for me to spend 13 seven or eight bucks on a floppy drive or whatever it was i must have had some floppy drive that i wanted to use uh in the pictures of the computer you could see uh my composite video capture device it was like a rock seal device that i never ended up using because i bought 100 foot composite cords and tried to get them 100 foot composite cord and and it was horrible the nice thing though about the video back then my tv like a tube tv had a video out on the back so i could plug my consoles in and then put the cables from the back of the tv to the video card which was nice nowadays you have to do pass through you can't just have a tv that has an output of your signal um you could see my speakers and monitor uh, were not a part of the build budget. Those were supplied for free from old computers. So you got the CRT monitor and these old ass speakers. That's what I was rocking with for a few years until I eventually got a flat screen uh, Samsung monitor, but not a widescreen monitor, the uh, normal, mold. I don't know what you call it, Port portrait? I don't think it's really called portrait, but you know the same length on all sides, whatever you call that. Uh, you could see some pictures of the desktop of my computer. Uh, AIM was a big thing back then. Remember when people still used Instant Messenger? Uh, I trolled people in RuneScape, something that I'm not very proud of. Back then, uh, I was a bit of a troll. So you could see I had the like uh, third-party software over RuneScape uh, spamming messages to people. I know, I'm admitting that I was a big loser when I was younger, so I signed up for World of Warcraft, started playing that, I only played it for a little bit, I played it for a few months before I went away to school, and then when I went away to school, I stopped playing it, uh, something cool was uh, MVP Edit, like, people still actually... That, I'm, I had MVP Baseball 2005, and that's the last MVP Baseball that was ever released. And people actually still play that on the PC because of the fact that it was a really good game, and they don't make it anymore because of the licensing issues with MLB. And MVP Edit basically was like a program to edit your rosters, and like you could uh, take... There was like ways to digitally scan players' faces and put them in the game and stuff. That, that was crazy. But uh, that was my first computer, and I was so proud of it. You could tell I was proud of it because of the fact that uh, I took the, uh, the pictures. Like, I felt like back then I was like, I'm taking pictures of a computer. Like, and then I even took, like, the screenshot of my specs. I thought it was so awesome. I was so proud to have a computer, and you could see the... Uh, mess of cables because I didn't know anything about cable management. It didn't really matter to me. Uh, it was it was it was rough back then, you know. And then you could see the little mess on the side of my computer. I had the uh, the Easter Bunny 
uh, holder for things. I got my Morrowind uh, discs right over there. So it was good times back then. And I was like, that's what got me into computers was building that first one. And then I built another one a few years after that. And then I had like this hiatus where I didn't really, I still worked on them, but like I wasn't really worried about like, oh, I need to build a great gaming computer. And I honestly don't have any idea if that first computer was a good gaming computer for the time back in 2006, but it was what I could build with my budget and I knew it was going to play Counter-Strike, Morrowind, World of Warcraft, KOTOR, like I knew it was going to play the games that I wanted to play, so I didn't really worry too much about was it the best, was I getting maximum performance, I just looked for the best parts that I could afford at the time. So, uh, guys, thanks for watching, and feel free to make fun of me in the comments, or uh, tell me about any of these parts or, like, specs that you may have been using back then, and tell me how bad my computer was or how much I got ripped off. I think I did an okay job, though, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.